Hi, hi George. George. Hello. Hello. How's, How's my audio, audio today? today? <clears throat> Had some issues with audio the other day. Hopefully it's, hopefully it's fixed now. Okay, Just to confirm, confirm my audio, audio is alright, you're hearing me clear, clear and no, no echoes, echoes and, and doubles and, and stuff. stuff. Just a little echo in a little bit. Um... I've got an awful, awful, awful little mic. mic. Um, if I pull that down, is that any better? We will get there one day, guys. <laughs> I've ordered a... Um, ordered a, a microphone to, to clip onto the, my shirt that was meant to turn up today but, but didn't. I didn't want to delay another another stream. So are we are we slightly better? Just let me know, just shout with me. I'll do my best to keep my head close enough to the microphone. Um, so, recap the other day, we, we did all the small small dots down here, and today we'll be moving up to the the leaves on the bamboo in the, in the top left. Um, relatively simple I'll try and give a bit of commentary as as we go um, so if anyone has any any questions or if my audio is still terrible um, okay that's good yeah by the, by the ne by the next stream um, I'll try and pull it up a tiny bit more I think that was could be better there. Yeah, I don't want it to peak too much. Um, what was I saying? So yeah, so when you're carving these these leaves, these these types of things, these lines sort of running running towards each other, creating these small triangles. It's just a case of one front, one back and then just nicking the top. Um, moving down to the finest point and as you move the, the, the smaller the gap between the two you see it gets it starts quite wide here and gets narrow here. You start on an angle and as you're getting more towards the most narrow point of the triangle you're, you're tilting the knife blade more upright. You don't want to undercut this line and and risk popping popping the 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 adjacent line out. Um, with carving of Japanese woodblock prints, the general rule of thumb is to always carve the inside of the shape first, and then the outside. Um, by carving the inside of the the shape or line first, it gives you more scope to uh, neaten up or, or thin out lines as you go when you're doing it on the inside it's, it's quite hard so you see these lines here you always do this inside first and then you do this outside edge once you've cleared 
in this area in here. And you'll see as I as I go. How is everyone this afternoon then? What's everyone been up to over the weekend? I was just working, working away. I've got a batch of prints that I need to get over to Jed Henry this week. So I've been, uh, been charging through that all weekend to try and keep ahead of myself a bit. Slow echo and volume low. Yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna echo just very slowly, due to me being sat in the very corner of this room. Um, I'll pull the volume up a, l a small amount. Um, the next stream, I do apologise again, John. The next stream, we will, uh, we will have good audio. There'll be a, a microphone attached to my my chest, and you can hear. All of the wonderful sound of cutting a piece of cherry. <laughs> this block up that I'm carving now it's actually quite a rare find. Um it's actually it's actually uh solid. That's a little something not to focus. Um this is actually the first time I've, I've carved on a piece of solid cherry before. Um, the reason that we don't all the time is, is one, it's very expensive, and two, it's quite hard to come by nowadays. The the timber that we that we get is generally for furniture making, and the the trees just aren't aren't there anymore to be able to to be able to make nice big fat solid blocks. It does make them quite hard to print if you're printing colour blocks over long editions and stuff on, on solid wood. I have printed on on solid blocks before in, in Japan. And quite often you have to give them a water bath because they're shrinking or registrations are an absolute nightmare sometimes with blocks like that. Um, the hang eater I'm using is a 4.5. Um, my first ever one I had was a, was a 6 and, and that's just, it's just way too, way too thick on this edge. Um, I have used a 3 before but I, it just I find it too too small. Um, other people might might be okay using it. I just I struggle with it. It just being too narrow this way. So a four point five suits me nicely. And these are this is actually my one of my last ones. I have to order some more, but postage and shipping and stuff is not. Not so reliable at the moment, so I've been slightly lacking there. I maybe should just place an order and and, and wait. For anyone tuning in that that doesn't 
uh, know what I'm doing or doesn't know me. My name's William Francis. I'm a Japanese woodblock printmaker based in the UK. And the block that I'm carving at the moment is a block that my Patreon subscribers will receive. It was going to be shipping out around the 5th of October when the um, when the Patreons hit the hit the sub goal of three months subscription. It'll be shipping out as of that week. Uh, it's a design by Utamaro and it's from the sort of about 1670, I think. It's not a multicolor block print. It's just this single key block, uh, which means uh, one, it's less less printing, but two, my uh, my carving on the key block has to be really spot on. Um, this print was was done many many years ago, and there's a few sort of burst and blown lines in the top here, and some areas were carved quite quite fast. Um, so my job here is to generally just clean up a lot of this line work. Obviously not in the areas like this, I'll try and copy this as much as possible. Up in here, we want nice, clean, crisp lines. You see in the, in the printing here, uh, pigment has, has built up and sort of blown blown that away. I'll, I'll make decisions as I, as I come through it, how, how much to keep and how much to get get rid of. Seeing as this, this is a, a reproduction, but at the same time, we don't want to reproduce all the mistakes and, and little errors. Um, what sort of I use? Uh, so I use a website for when I'm looking for anything to do with uh, making reproductions. I use a website called ukioe.org. Um, it's a database of thousands, maybe tens of thousands of images from museum collections all over the world, uh, maybe from the British Museum or Honolulu, Boston, uh, Tokyo, places like that, and they all have the uh, link to the museum source, as well as, uh, in most cases, good high resolution scans of the prints themselves, um, along with information on date and and uh, date, size, designer, things like that. Um, it really is uh, quite a fantastic website. Some some museum collections don't let you uh, download images for use without paying first, um, but the majority, the majority allow you to. Uh, the British Museum certainly does. Um, the Museum of Fine Art does. I'm not sure if Honolulu does, but the some of the, the, the best collections, I, I generally will go for the Museum of Fine Art links if, if they have the scan. Yeah, it, it's great, isn't it, George? And what you see I'm, where I'm doing here, where I've cleared out these areas and, and things like that, that's generally not done in, in a traditional sense. If you were to see a, a traditional carver carbon, it would just be loads and loads and loads of lines, incisions made into the wood, and small triangle areas popped out on the edges. So if I was to make an example on the end of this leaf here, so that I'd carve the inside, you would see 
the card will do a cut there and you come around the corner that way come past the point and then you would make a cut on the opposite side coming past the point and then just pop the corner pop that triangle and the reason why you would pop that triangle is you're, when you're doing the big clear and out work you created a space in which your your ice ski these chisels where they're not gonna chip the, the, the tip of that that point um, so generally if you were to, to view a traditionally carved block it would it would look like a lot of these small triangles and you see this small raised area here that's generally what you would see um, I'm clearing these out one because it's a lot more interesting for people to view and for me to sort of post photos to Instagram and show on the stream people can see actual progression and uh, it sort of helps me keep track of where I am within the block um, I'm not traditionally trained I'm 95% self-taught um, so I've just sort of got my own strange mannerisms and, and ways of doing it George yeah that's correct um, if I'm if I'm right in thinking it's probably only localized to Japan but David Ball's 100 poets series that he did his 10-year project that he did finishing in the 90s was turned into a coloring book and the the books I've seen they're, they're they really are quite faithful reproductions of the of the print so you, you probably couldn't go wrong there um, my my true advice would be if you really are serious about about study or, or even just um, breaking an image down and, and, and studying it using the old museum copies if you can find a really good quality one is really a good way to go because you can you can be safe in the knowledge that the images that you're getting have not been put through a computer They're, they are an exact representation of the lines that the carver carved with his own knife a few hundred years ago and as a means of study there's not you don't get much much better than that I've spent hours and hours and hours looking through books and and old prints and, and shops and stuff trying to trying to sort of reverse engineer how those guys did it and obviously now with the internet it's, it's infinitely easier to to study and, and with the the resources that Dave's put out on his website and, and taken the time to share and his stream and, and stuff that's really how I how I trained I, I just watched watched Dave streams all day every day over and over and over watched every video that he'd made and tried to apply that to what I was doing myself it helped that Dave was also a left-handed Westerner that had taken on this and it was proof of concept that it, that it can be done and that was a real inspiration for for me still is yeah so I so Dave Dave really is um, probably the biggest inspiration to my to my work then I work with Jed Henry his his business partner and 
I collaborate with Jed, so so I have a sort of a, a tie there, and um, I feel quite duty bound to do the best work that I can, um, given that there is that that link between the two. But uh, Laura Boswell is another one that I that I really admire. Laura's woodlock prints and her her ability to take what she learned as a very accomplished lino um, artist and translate that into to woodblock prints uh, is really really inspires me and yeah Cameron and, and Cal they, they both do very interesting things Cal with his his laser laser carved and his just ability to innovate and, and think of different ways to to be progressive in the work that he's doing um, but another another really big reason that I that I wanted to pursue this was a guy called Tom Killian. Um, he's from California, and if you if you were to search his work, perhaps maybe someone in the chat knows his work or can post a link. I mean, Tom uh, Tom Killian Killian spelled. K I L L I O N, I think. Um, he started out producing woodblock prints, Japanese woodblock prints, uh, carved in uh, a fairly traditional manner. And he prints with oil based inks on a, on a big industrial. Um, printing press and he's in recent years he's been uh, taking trips out to Japan I think and commissioning printers to, to print some of his work and I think learning it himself but the the way that he designs an image is something I'm really envious of I wish I could I wish that I could uh, draw and, and design prints but I guess that would take away from the actual making. Yeah, Tom's, yeah, his work's fascinating. Uh, I can't remember printing full time. Yes, this is my one and only job. I did this uh, on a, on a part-time basis for two or three years. Um, I was still working a day job as a, as a carpenter and, and joiner and managed to get to the point where Jed was happy enough with my work that and happy enough with my my productivity and output that we could take the plunge and go full time we started on a on a one print basis so um I, I was a carpenter with my with my father and I was fortunate enough that he allowed me to take a month off from work to really give um, give it my my all and see how it turned out. And Jed was happy enough, and so we decided we'll try another one, and then another one rolled into another one. And since June last year, I have been full time. Uh, I also did up until the uh the whole pandemic situation i attended comic book conventions on jed's behalf selling his uh jiclay prints that he makes um and that was sort of how i supplemented myself in, in the start with not being not being so productive uh been learning to try and make a, a print, in a, a full batch of prints in a month, um, it's tough. So I needed something to sort of keep me going in between. So I did maybe one one convention every every month for Jed, and and that helped. And then that all sort of 
came to a grinding halt at the at the start of the year, but in, in actual fact, it's it's almost been it's almost been better for me because I've I've only had time to carve and print for the last six plus months, and since then I've I've managed to make a print. Uh, I've managed to cover print and, and make a full batch, complete a full order every single month since since February, and we're yeah we're plugging along. I'm sorry for turning turning the block so much. Here, I'll try and keep in frame as much as I can. I just want to make sure I'm hitting these corners, I don't want to slip. When you're doing rectangles like this, you always pop out the No worries Caleb, thank you very much for coming along and thank you for your thank you for your support and your and your feedback all the time. Take care. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, the corners. You always pop the corner out first because it's it's quite hard to get in there with the with the small chisels. So by popping these these corners away, similar to the the end of a, a point, you're you're allowing yourself a, a nice bit of space to get in and clear this area out with the chisels. And when you are when you're carving into a an interior point, I'll see how much you can do. I can demonstrate it. So when you come along the line, when you go into the point, you bring it there. So when you're at this sort of angle, as you get closer to the point, you're bringing the knife more upright this way and going into the point and very, very slightly undercutting where that point is. To really make sure that you're you're going to clear this whole whole area out. And you can hear it once you when you've done it correctly. So we'll just take a little pop. So we start on a nice angle, and then the closer we get. More upright, very slightly undercut into that corner, and then just pop out that small triangle of wood. Hi Lucy, how are you? So same thing down here, as we get more in, just pull up towards the end of the corner. And then just pop that section out.
of the focus on the camera. Can anyone let me know? Are we good? Feels maybe a little bit fuzzy, but not sure. Hard to tell. I don't know if it's just the processing or the or my laptop mounting, but. Great, so we've just got the, the audio to to figure out and we'll be we'll be somewhere near then. If anyone has any specific questions, do shout out. I'll, I'll do my best to cover cover everything as we're going through. I guess the question I've got for you guys, are you, uh, what sort of streaming schedule suits you guys? Um, uh, and Monday, Monday, Wednesday is, is, uh, okay with me at the moment. Um, but if there are certain days that are that are better for you guys, do let me know, and I'll try as much to I can I can work around what what you guys are are uh, most comfortable with. Um, the only days I can't really do a Sunday is that's the the one day of the week that I really have off. Um, maybe do a Monday Wednesday Thursday um, as of as of the end of next week once I finish this batch I'm gonna be uh, just carving through this through this print so I can oh, that's good pause so I can I can maybe do some morning streams for me because I'll, I'll just be carving all day every day anyway so there's no issue in me doing maybe a mid-morning early afternoon stream for you guys or maybe a first thing in the morning stream that would be maybe more of a, a later night evening one uh, for people in the US and then uh, 
an evening my time stream, which I guess would be more your early afternoon. And I do have plans to stream more of the printing. It's just this this one print I'm working on is rather rather tricky and requires quite a lot of attention. So once I'm once I'm a little bit more comfortable um, in front of the camera and with the stream and stuff and the whole setup, then printing will, will definitely start to become more more a part of this whole production. Yeah, I guess that, George. Yeah, yeah, we'll stick with what we are for now. Uh, ben, yeah, I, ju I think that's just because there seems to have been... There was a, a group of Westerners that... that arrived in Japan um, the Dutch went over with the printing press and there was a big boom in uh, French artists becoming interested in, in Japanese art and um, a lot of Japanese young Japanese men and women went actually went to France to study oil painting so, so I just guess by that that um, sort of interest in, in the mystique of Japan inspired people to document a, a lot more of the process. Um, um, uh, Yoshida did uh, a lot of documentation and, and wrote books and stuff, but really I think it was... Um, people like James Michener and and others like that that saw the Shinhanga movement in the in the sort of immediate post war period and were inspired to document the what was what was going on. And I guess no one really felt the need to do so in the West which is I don't know. Maybe it's a maybe it's a different case in other countries where they may be a bit more uh, romanticism about the the Western printmaking process. It certainly couldn't be just a a factor of it being the printing press and stuff. Maybe it's maybe it had something to do with the inherent nature of what Japanese woodblock prints are and it being so different from from what was being done in Europe at, at that time, Europe and America at that time. There seems to have always been this this sort of fascination from the west of, of Japan and, and Japanese things, gardens and martial arts, and the culture and, and things. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely George. These large groups of, of uh, servicemen in Japan and seeing all these new things, new sights and sounds and, and stuff, it, that most definitely had a, a large amount to do with it.
So moistening the paper. So um, how I do my paper. Maybe <clears throat> in a couple of weeks I'll be doing a, a full. I'll do a full stream on 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 that. But just for now, if you're moistening the paper, so I'll go. So I'll go 10 sheets of newsprint um, and you damp, you wet every other one. So there'll be five damp, five dry. And then 10 sheets of paper to print on, following the same rule. So every other is moistened. And you follow that all the way, all the way through. So 10 and 10 and 10 and 10 and 10 and 10. 10 newsprint, 10 uh, washi, 10 newsprint, 10 washi. Uh, so you just create this big sandwich and what I do I have a, a large cellophane uh, or, or plastic bag that I fold around the, the paper so the paper's encased and that's so the moisture can't escape and I'll leave that uh, on the first day of printing I'll leave that overnight uh, at least at least 12 hours I'll, I'll generally leave it for and <clears throat> excuse me when you go to print you want the paper to not, if the paper feels cold in your fingers, then it's too wet. It wants to feel, um, David Ball said it to me that, you know, when you put your bed sheets in the, in the dryer and, and how it comes out and it's still slightly, very slightly damp, but it feels fluffy and you want the paper to feel fluffy rather than damp or moist. Um, People often get the the misconception of, of wetting paper or damping dampening paper. You don't actually want to, to dampen it. You want to you don't want to be printing with it damp or wet. Um, you're going to struggle to get good flat colour from that. Um, you're looking for it to more more to feel fluffy. And uh, if you follow those rules and whilst you're printing, keep it in the the plastic damp pack you shouldn't really have too many issues unless you're in an abnormally warm climate you shouldn't have too many issues when uh, printing with the paper drying out if, if it does start to dry out you can always add a, uh, a, a, a one or two wet sheets of newsprint into the stack and it will and it will sort of equalize as it's going and vice versa if it's feeling if you're doing a, a particularly large large area and you're adding quite a lot of moisture to the paper you might want to add a, a dry sheet of newsprint through through the um, through the damp stack to allow it to soak up a bit of the moisture take it away from the paper a little bit uh, if you go on to woodblock.com David Ball's website he has a section titled encyclopedia and he details that process quite Quite extensively, and uh, gives quite a lot of good information on on damping, dampening paper, and uh, and keeping paper in a in a in a good order whilst printing to allow the the moisture to equalise as you as you continue. Um, I would also advise as well to try if you're if you're. If you're testing it is not really an issue but if you're if you're additioning then I would probably advise to print just a single color a day and um, really just focus on controlling the moisture in, in that paper uh, some sagging uh, would, do you mean whilst you're whilst you're printing over over a a large area so say this was all cleared out but you're asking whether the paper would sag into that into that area is that what you mean by that
Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it depends. depends. It really, it really depends, depends on the, on the, on the, the area that you have cleared, cleared out. out. So, so for, for example, example, this print, print I'm, I'm not anticipating really any sagging, sagging of the paper, paper anywhere. anywhere. Um, um, because there's a lot of areas to pick, pick up the paper. paper. A general, general rule of thumb, thumb in, 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 in when, when you're clearing, clearing out, out is between, between uh, areas, areas or between an uncarved area and an area that's been cleared out, you want about three fingers, fingers width. width. So if I show the book I've been, been carving today, today. Then, then you can, can see. see this is the printed, printed area, area. And, and I have, I have cleared, cleared out quite, quite a lot. You can, you can see, see it's, it's, a, it's, it's a good, good fairly good, good deep, deep area that I've cleared away. away. Um, um, but because, because I, have I have these areas around here, here that act as supports for the paper, paper when the paper, paper goes, goes on the block, block. I've got yeah. around three, three fingers, fingers width, width before, before it starts, starts to to rise, rise up, up and you, you grade, grade that edge off, off. you use a, you use a large, large, not this necess one necessarily, but a, a large flatter chisel to sort of fade and grade, grade the areas off, off so that you haven't got a hard edge. edge. But, but with, with practice, practice with the Baron, you, you shouldn't, shouldn't it, it happens, happens, it always does, does happen. happen, but when you're printing, printing with, with the Baron, the Baron you want, want good, good hand, hand uh, uh, posture, posture tucking in these, these, these fingers, fingers are really creating good, these two fingers, fingers here are creating a really, really tight, tight grip. grip. And pulling, you, you can imagine, imagine pulling the baron into, into, into your, your hand, hand here, here and, and imagine, imagine the power, power coming, coming down through this point, point of your hand. hand. And when, when you're, you're printing, printing, you don't, you don't need, need to be up over this area. area. And then hit, hit, you, only wanna, you only want, want to hit the area, area that has got, got the colour on. Wrong. The echo is back. back. I don't know what happened. Was it me just leaning away? Could have been me just leaning away. away. Um, do, do you need, need an island? island? Uh, it, it, it all depends. depends. It, it really, really does, does depend on the block and, and the amount of space and your, uh, for want, want of a better word, your competency in, in, in the printing. printing. Um, I, I do, do have a couple of blocks that are up, that are up in storage, storage, but I do, I do have, have a couple, couple of blocks that have, have a, a large board area, area. And, and it's, it's just a key block, block that has a, a, a borderline and then just an area here. And, and I left, left a small island in the middle, middle just, to, just to hold the paper on. on. Um, you just have to be really, really careful, careful that you're not picking that up with the baron and embossing, embossing that into the paper because it's, it's going to be really hard to get out. out. Um, generally, when, when, when designing, designing prints, prints, when you look at the most Japanese woodblock prints, you won't see too, too much, much of that, that in a key block, block. It's, it's, it's especially not uh, uh, any edo, edo area, area edo, edo area, area. Um, japanese, japanese prints, prints the, the key block was really paramount and that's where they held all of the detail of the print so um, unless it was something maybe very specific or a surimono or something like that you wouldn't really see too much um, Big negative space in the shin hanger prints. They they certainly did that, but um, yeah, it's just a case of of careful printing. And if you if you do really feel like you need an island, then uh, by all means, um, leave leave space for it. Just make sure that you fade off that edge so you haven't got a hard hard edge for the the baron to sort of clip and emboss into the paper. Is the, the echo, echo still, still there? Are we, we, we okay, okay or are we? Has it all gone wrong? The 
Decent capture card, then it should make the process a lot smoother. But as I said, I'd ordered a, a really good quality uh, thing called a lavalier microphone that was meant to turn up today, but that was a no go. So at least we've got a couple of four tune next time. Now we're back to our small triangle. What's generally a good idea to do is carve all one side of them first, and then if you're if you're like me and you flip the block, carve all one side first, and then turn your block slightly, and carve all of the the second side coming back down. So here we have both interior and exterior triangles. So here you'll just it's just a case of keeping the keeping the angle on both sides of the line. And then you can pop out this nice nice chunk in here. And you really want to as much as you can get out without really struggling for it because it's going to be it's going to be quite tough to to get a, a small a small chisel up in up into those recesses as efficient as you can be with your knife to start with makes the makes, makes the clearing out process a lot smoother if you can do good work with the knife i'm by no means saying that the work i'm currently doing with the knife is efficient or, or good in any way but the the more efficient and uh, yeah the more efficient you can be with your cuts the less work that you're going to have down the line. And uh, that seems maybe a bit odd to say, but it's, it's, you certainly, you certainly will notice it if you're, if you're to carve a block yourself and you're, you're spending time going into small areas and picking bits out. And especially from a production standpoint, if I'm spending 45 minutes of a day picking out little tiny corners that I've missed or haven't been quite so efficient or clean with my knife then that's time that I'm not not able to spend on, on something more productive. Now we're coming up on coming up on an hour, so I'll be I'm just gonna finish this area in here and then and then we'll call it an evening. Huh? I'm just snapping the end of my knife. So there we go.
Once, once I, I once I, I get there, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna I'm gonna, gonna buy a poster, a GoPro, a GoPro or something, something next month. We can, we can have, have a, a little side panel that shows shows, uh, shows me and the, the, the sharpening, sharpening bench, bench next to me, so we can we can, can see that all together. together. But no, no we, we can, can see, see the tip of the knife. knife. It's been it's snapped. snapped. I just got a bit excited coming down my corner. Can I show it to Tony? Tony. No. But I guess that's it. Anyway, thank you guys very much for tuning in and watching. Thank you for all the questions and the conversation. I will be back same time on Wednesday evening. Uh, I'll, I'll try and, I'll try and get, get these these leaves cleared out so we can we can maybe get, get into the into this area, area into these swirls, swirls and, and then we can we can speak about, about that because um, that's, that's another another interesting technique or way we can do the inside of the feathers or something on this on this first on the first bird here. Okay. Um, but yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you very, very much, guys. guys. And, and any, any any feedback or, or constructive, constructive criticism that you guys may have, please uh, either direct message me on Instagram at Francis Hanger, or you can email me um, or leave a comment on my website. My my email uh, my email is on my website. Website uh, William Hyphen Francis dot net. And if you're feeling particularly generous or uh, by no means feel obliged to do so but you can subscribe to me on patreon at francis hanger i have three tiers of subscription uh the highest tier being i think ten dollars a month and after three months of subscription when you hit Three months and thirty dollars you will receive your first print will be this and we will be sort of taking a study of the history of japanese prints through a small snapshot of reduction designs that will create a nice i think a nice little series for the patreon um but thank you again guys for watching and Take care. I'll see you all on Wednesday, hopefully. Thank you very much for tuning in. See ya.